gentlemen, the president of NARAL Pro-Choice America, Elise Hill. Nation crew for putting on this what I call family reunion every year. Um, being a part of the Netroots is part of my identity, like being a Texan or like loving sharks. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, know of my obsession with sharks. And I think it's partly because the principles embedded in the Netroots are ones that are really powerful and meaningful to me. The idea that accountability matters that we speak truth to power, the idea that our destinies and our values are intertwined and intersect in the public policy arena, and the idea that organizing is the fuel and the engine of social change. And those principles have been my North Star in the 16 months since I have taken my job as president of NARAL Pro-Choice America. I want to talk to you guys for a minute about the courts. On June 30th, I stood on the steps of the Supreme Court when five male justices ruled that discrimination against women is not discrimination at all when they sided with Hobby Lobby and said our bosses get to decide about our birth control. This is the exact same Supreme Court who the week before have ruled from behind their 250-foot buffer zone that women entering clinics don't need a 35-foot protective buffer zone. This is the same Supreme Court who has rolled back voting rights, who has said that money is speech, and who has voted against workers in Harris versus Quinn that came down the same day as Hobby Lobby. The lower courts matter too. The lower courts are the ones upholding the laws, sweeping the South that are closing clinics, meaning women can't access basic reproductive health care. The stakes are high. In my home state of Texas, a 2012 study showed that 7% of women in Texas, poor women, women in, who live in rural parts of the state, the Rio Grande Valley, who need abortion care. 7% are attempting to self-abort before they can ever reach a clinic. We know where that road goes. That's the direction these courts are taking us. Courts are the branch of government that turn laws into rights. They're supposed to be the expression of our values of freedom, of justice, of equality, the values that make democracy thrive. And that can't happen. We've seen it with marriage equality as court after court is ruling that discrimination against couples who love each other is unconstitutional and as the Supreme Court overturned DOMA. And we're getting savvy to it. Just this past spring, we joined in a campaign to oppose a federal nominee, lifetime appointment to the federal bench out of Georgia, and his name is Michael Box. This is a man who voted, while he was in the state legislature, to publish the names and addresses of doctors who provide abortions on the internet at a time where clinic violence was high. This is a man who voted to, uh, for a constitutional amendment in the state of Georgia to ban marriage equality. And this is a man who voted not once but twice to fly the Confederate flag over the state capital of Georgia. When he was questioned on that, he said, I'm not a flag historian. I didn't know that that had racial connotations. Oh, seriously, I kid you not, in a Senate hearing. This has been galvanizing. It has been a galvanizing campaign and it enshrines every single one of those principles I talked about. Accountability. This was a nominee of President Obama. We have got to hold our elected officials accountable when they do the wrong thing. We've got to be there for them when they do the right thing and hold them accountable when they do the wrong thing. This was about the intersection of our issues, civil rights, LGBT rights, women's rights. That's why we got 46 organizations representing all of those issues signing on in opposition to this nominee. And this is where organizing has paid off. Hundreds of thousands of actions have gone into Senate offices to oppose this nominee. And just an hour ago, 
reported by Amanda Turkle in the Huffington Post. Senator Chuck Schumer, who will be on stage after me, became the 10th senator to say he will vote no on this nominee. That's why elections matter. That's why elections matter, because who do you think is appointing these folks, nominating them, confirming them, and who do you think we have to depend on to fix it when the courts mess up? I stood with many senators, including Senator Udall of Colorado and Senator Murray of Washington State, to introduce the Not My Boss's Business Law five days after the Supreme Court ruled that we should ask our bosses permission for what happens in our bedroom. The Senate moved fast. Now, we got defeated on a procedural vote, but we actually have the majority in the Senate supporting that bill, and we need to demand that the House take this vote, too. We are facing a huge gap in elected representation. Seven in 10 Americans believe in the right of women to choose when and how and with whom we have families. Seven in 10 American, across age, across ethnicity, across geography. Four in 10 federal electeds uphold those values. Three in 10 governors uphold those values. One in 10 state legislators hold pro-choice values. We are the majority and we've got to close the gap. And how do we do that? How do we close the gap? We expose their truth. We don't speak truth to power. These people, the Supreme Court showed us, these people, they're not anti-abortion. They were anti-abortion. They would join hands with us and make sure we had universal access to contraception. They would make sure that we had accurate sex education for young people to make informed decisions. These people are not pro-life. Because if they were, they would know that everywhere abortion is legal, the number of abortions don't go down, but the number of deaths of women go up. And these people are not pro-family because almost every single one of them that votes to restrict abortion and contraception votes to make things harder for working mothers and working families. We need them to respect women's choices, but also paid sick days, increase the minimum wage. We are the pro-family party, and we need to call them on it. And when we do, what we see is we come together around our shared values, our common interests, and we organize to close the gap, make sure that our elected representatives pass the laws that reflect our lives and that the courts turn those laws into rights, freedom, justice, and equality. 2014 is just the beginning. It's not the end, but we're gonna be there in force. Seven and 10, pro-choice majority. Close the gap, y'all. Thanks for being here.